Hey everyone, Brendan here. Today I'm going to go over the media uh, elements. First, in project and resources, I actually already pre uploaded a flash animation and an audio just in case. I did upload a video, but it is not uh, playing right on the HTML video. Not sure why. I mean, it's an MP4, but I'm still working on figuring that part out. The flash animation, I'm going to drag it out, select it, the one I pre uploaded, and there it is. You know, like everything I usually do, is I center it. So let's say, look at the properties. It's got the repeat, the start automatic, it's all preset. I mean, pretty much everything is set up. You really don't need to do anything else. So if we go in and take a look at it, you got the creepy eyes looking back and forth. All right, flash animation, nice and easy. Also with the flash animation under styles and style presets, you have a few different options for frames, a couple of uh, three different color frames and some shadows. So just a little bit of options with that, but very simple, nice and easy to use. And plus you could also use an actual frame like we did here and make one of those and paste it and put the um, animation right over the top of it as well. So remember, all of this is all layers. You could just put all this stuff into layers, one on top of another. And create, well actually just, your mind is pretty much a limitation with this program. Add images with the image gallery. Now this cycles through images, or you could use it for just a control too. Uh, swap in between, looking at some images. So we're doing is just applying this is a list management you add the images adjust the properties or delete the images if you want to control which ones are shown when you upload it has the upload date description of the of the um, image you can actually type out a description about it it's the image location on the computer that is uploading um, link to page. You can have actually a link to a page using the link configuration or you could actually type in the HTML or the HTTP um, a website address. And so you can actually have it point anywhere on the internet. And then this is the title, the name of the image itself. And so that's the properties. Now any time you can actually come back and edit all of it too. You could change it, you could delete the photos, add the photos, you could re-upload the photos later. All real simple. Then you hit save. And see, we'll go ahead and center. And see with, uh, that's neat, is you can actually hit this button right here in the corner. That's what brings up the whole list management. That's what this key is. Now whenever you hit the lock, that means it locks it in this position. You can no longer move it around. And so I usually don't lock them. You don't really need to. I mean, I, I mean, it's good if you're not if you don't want to accidentally grab it and move it a few inches to the side or something. Um, but what happens when we first load it up? What it's going to be is you're going to have. The images that you have, I mean, they'll go all the way across and stop and actually go into a list form. You can push a button and look at more. You have a play button. That's when it plays between the images and switches automatically. You can stop it. You can actually cycle the images one at a time, or you could select the ones at the top. And it's got the name and the counter of how many images there are at the bottom here. Now the cool thing is, you could come in here, and you could turn on and off the navigation buttons that are the play or the forward and back buttons, the play button. So it's a play and pause button. You could turn it on and off. You could have it start automatically to cycle, and you can even rename the buttons as well. Now in styles, 
you can adjust if it's only in zoom. So in other words, it would be just the pictures, no top images. You can have no text, where there's no text, but there's still a counter at the bottom. And the buttons actually have, well, you know, I'll get down to the buttons in a second. This one's no text and no counter at the bottom. This one is no controls, so it turns off the controls, the play and pause and reverse. This one adds buttons, so it adds a play symbol and a stop symbol or pause symbol, as well as a forward and back symbols on out the outside of the next and previous. Um, and no counter means there's no counter at the bottom. So you could literally have no text and no counter. And what this will do is just have the image with the thumbnails on the top. I didn't turn off the play and pause. That's another thing we could do. Let's go into here, here. Turn off the play and pause. And what that could do is allow you just to select the image you want to look at doesn't move it always stays or you could have it automatically rotate automatically turn on and start switching between images all of that is within your control and that's a neat thing about the image gallery real easy the horizontal image carousel and the vertical image carousel are two almost identical ways of they're almost identical um, let's bring this out you open up what they call list management you add the images We'll add an image real quick. And it's, you know, the same thing as the other one. You, same properties, same everything, same properties, same delete. So let's go ahead and add a bunch of images real quick because this one is a carousel. It move is there's two images at one time on the screen. just like that. Now with this one there are a few styles you can choose. You have a few different side to side buttons and co different color styles and so you could throw in I like the gray button one but you select what you want but some that is necessary. Behavior effect you need to turn this to one of the effects. I usually just throw it on swing. Okay automatic. I like to automatically start and delay. I set to 1500. Those are, you definitely need it to switch it to swing. Also with the vertical and horizontal ones you need to save the page and then refresh it as soon as you're done with the settings. Otherwise it doesn't want to load right when you preview it. And see, this way it actually shows all the images. Otherwise, if we didn't do it this way, it would have, um, the images would have shown up. As soon as the three that were on screen moved on, it would have disappeared. And that's where resetting the page every now and then is important. If something's not showing up right on the previews, first thing you want to do is just hit the reset button, re-preview it, and then look at it again. It could have a different effect. Now like I said the HTML5 video I was not able to get to function properly. Um, you add an MP4 file. I do have one but it's not wanting to load inside the actual browser. I don't know if it's just because it's not actually on the web or I just haven't quite figured out what it is going on with it. You have the autoplay, turn on the autoplay, default controls, mute and repeat display. Okay, failure. I don't know, we'll see. Let's 
take a look and see if that will work now. Nope. I gotta find a much smaller video. I mean, this seems, uh, I think like an hour long program or something like that. I don't, I don't have any short MP4s on my computer. Maybe that's it. I'm not really sure. But I will post an update. Once I finish with all the elements, I'm gonna post an update of anything that I wasn't sure how to do or maybe th new things I have learned over the time of using it. Next, daily motion videos. Now this one, you go to daily motion. Finally. What we're gonna do is select the first video. Pause it so it doesn't scream. Come on. Oh, it's still uploading. Sorry, I'm uploading the tutorials right now, the ones I've already finished. You go over here to export, and you gotta get the embedded code. That's. Come on. You copy it, you go back over here, open elements, and you paste it and apply. What you want to do is make it larger because you don't want it really, really tiny. And so when we go into the web, right here, you play it, watch the video right from here on your website. And that still won't play. So it'd be a good idea just to upload it to Daily Motion or YouTube because everybody loves YouTube and here copy you on this one oh wait let me go ahead and bring this over you only copy this one you only do the share file not the embedded one but the share file on YouTube so copy that paste it in there so you only do the share one and hit apply Again, stretch it so it's visible. Refresh and preview. I refresh consistently, that way everything sets up the way it's supposed to. Give it a second, there it is. Now we got the, actually this is my open element intro video that's on YouTube right now. I don't even know if anyone has seen it yet. I doubt it because it's only been up for like 10 minutes. And so that is how you do the media files. You add all these videos and movies and... Well, once I figure out how to add the movies, I will let you know. But until then, guys... Well, actually, sorry. The next video is going to be forms. And actually, forms... I know I could do that because I already did that on one of my websites. I was able to get it to where the person could email us right through our website. Right here, name, address, city, zip. They put the information in, hit submit, send it to us and tell us what's going on and we give it back to them. And so, Yeah, we'll show you how to set up all the different forms, how to make sure that they have to make sure it's not a robot by using the CAPTCHA. But until then, I'd like to say happy building.